there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Welcome to Russia. That's how cold it is, look. The largest country on earth and home to nearly 150 million people. Growing up as a kid in the 80s in, in London, Russia was painted as this weird big baddie. Now with Vladimir Putin well into his third term as president, it's starting to feel like that again. Pro-Russian rebels in eastern Ukraine. Vladimir Putin has ignored the dark warnings from the West. There's going to have to be a very different relationship between Britain and Russia. The West has imposed tough sanctions against Russia. Russia is responsible for the violence. And relations are the frostiest since the Cold War. So I'm here to find out what life is really like for young people, especially if you're gay. I would be the in 2013, it became illegal to tell anyone under 18 that being homosexual was in any way normal. And while Putin is busy flexing his muscles abroad, life here just got harder for thousands of Russians. I meet the homophobes who are out to get them. If the law allowed it, yeah, if the law allowed what it, would he do? He would kill those people. I don't like a Bible. <laughs> and discover what just one law says about a whole country's attitude to being gay. Homosexuality is disgusting. Uh, homophobia is beautiful and natural. I'm on my way to St. Petersburg to attend Queer Fest, an annual get-together for lesbians, gays, bisexuals and transsexuals, or LGBT for sure. First stop, the city's most gay-friendly hostel, and they've sent Sergei to meet me. Okay. Nice to um, meet you. Nice again. to meet you. You too, you too. That's the, uh, the first time I've seen my name so, in Russia. Welcome to St. Petersburg. <laughs> yeah, nice, thank you. I'm being driven in St. Petersburg's only gay taxi service. In today's climate, gay men like Sergei and driver Elena can't afford to be too obvious about it. But the car does contain a few clues. It's a lot of rainbows in this car. Yeah, the only rainbow taxi in St. Petersburg. So why did um, Elena start the uh, the Rainbow Taxi service? According to a recent survey, nearly half of gay people here have experienced some kind of homophobic abuse. But while the situation is serious, the scenery is stunning. That's so pretty. Wow. That's beautiful. Um, so it's a church, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This isn't what I expected Russia to look like. Uh, forgive me, I know that's quite judgmental. I expected quite a, a cold, industrial, sort of hard city. Um, but it feels like we're in, I don't know, Vienna or Paris. I mean, there's so many beautiful old buildings here. But it's only upper appearance. If you lived here for some time, you would see how, what situation is. Lenin is everywhere in Russia. The Bolshevik Revolution led to 74 years of strict communist rule in all areas of Russian life. And until 1993, gay people could be punished with up to five years in prison, sometimes with hard labor. These days, homosexuality itself is not illegal, but old attitudes persist. For a young mm -hmm. gay man, what is, this, uh, what is this city like? In Russian mentality, a boy must be a boy act like a boy, look like a boy. If, if a boy is dressed not like a boy, um, yes, he's faggot. You can be beaten only for your appearance, only for your apparel, even if you do not behave like a gay. The idea that someone can't be who they want to be openly, to me, is a scary thought. This is a Russian reality, unfortunately. The steps kind of give the gay hostel away, but Sergei assures me many people here don't know what the rainbow flag means. But inside, 
there was no mistake where we were. Look at this. Well, this is flamboyant. Very colourful. I know, I know. <laughs> if, if you're tired of bright colours, just do this way. <laughs> It will help. It will help for sure. Well, that definitely gets rid of the bright colours. <laughs> That's cool. OK, take care. Right. International Festival of Queer Culture. Queer Fest is the largest LGBT event in Russia. Ten days of social and cultural events and seminars, all starting tomorrow. That's interesting. So Queer Fest is an 18-plus event. You can't go if you're under 18 which is really strange because men, women and children, you see, walk in the streets of London during Pride. Here, you're not allowed to talk to children about homosexual behaviour, activity, lifestyle or anything. The government say the anti-gay propaganda law was created to protect young people from the moral and public health dangers of being homosexual, and it's strictly enforced. It does make me a little bit worried because my mentality alone, if uh, verbalised, is enough to get me thrown into jail. Should I ask the wrong question or should I say the wrong thing and have it heard by the wrong person, suddenly things could take a really dark turn. The next morning, I have a question for Sergei about the festival, its location. So uh, today is Queer Fest, is that right? Yeah. How are you supposed to find it? To to call them. So everyone that goes has to call the festival to find out where to go. Yes. <laughs> I think I've taken for granted the severity of what's actually happening here because I don't think I've um, ever heard of a festival that's public and free to attend that doesn't tell you where it is. I finally got the address and thought I'd head down there early. But it seems others have got there before me. No idea why the police is here. Shit. There are armed police here. It's understandable uh, that they're here to keep the peace. The only thing I'm worried about is that they are armed. Therefore, maybe they've heard more than I have. As well as the police, I noticed two guys across the road. Who did these two? They've been here a while. So, uh, are you guys here for Queer Fest then? Actually, we're a little bit afraid to go there, to be involved. So, what, are you straight? Are you a couple? Are you friends? Yeah, we're a couple. You're a couple. So, why are you afraid to be involved? Oh, do you think that this policy is just stand there? We're not pulled on it, and, in fact, it's quite dangerous, specifically for us two. Do you resent the fact that you're not able to act? in the way that you'd like. Ну, конечно, мы не можем себя открыто, мы не можем брать друг друга за руки, я не могу его целовать или что-то в этом роде, ну, проявлять любые проявления чувств. На самом деле, посмотрите, приехал ещё и подмога, ОМОН, полиция. То есть А вас there's more more have arrived. There's a bus. A bus full of them. Okay, see. Они боятся этим чего-то. I really want to catch up with these two later. But first, I need to find the organisers. Hi, how you doing? I'm Reggie. What's your name? I'm Alfred. How you doing, Alfred? So, uh, what can you expect from a, a day like today, then? Our friends from homophobic and from orthodox activists and other people come here and they try to not allow us this yeah. festival. Yeah. But no sooner have I arrived, everyone starts packing up. Excuse me. What's happening? We left and uh, go uh, to different. So you have to move? Yes. You've been kicked out? Yes. The owner has been in touch and said that it's a safety issue, which is a really poor excuse. Apparently, the ceiling isn't safe for an event to happen here, therefore, they need to leave. On the other side of the door stands Vitaly Milanov, architect of the notorious law against what his supporters call gay propaganda. Excuse me. I'm so sorry, excuse me. Would you be willing to talk to us at all? 
We were making a television program, television a documentary. Program about what? About young people here in Russia. He hasn't, there, I can't see young people here. Well, they were. There was a, no, no, uh, I can't see. I would like to. I would like to find any young people, except except uh, different faggots. But unfortunately, I can't do it because the faggots they hired security. So we, people of Russia, we cannot enter to see what they are doing there. Probably, I think that they they're making a homosexual propaganda towards minors. So was your plan to find out what was happening here yeah, at the festival? Yeah, I would festival? like to find. I'm, I'm uh, official representative, so I'm the member of the city hall. Yeah. I would like to find out what's going on, but I'm not allowed to do it. Because if you're a woman dressed like men, uh, like this one, if you dress like not a woman, uh, dressed like some <clears throat> faggot, no, you can't enter. If you're dressed like a normal person, you cannot enter. And do you believe that this is a dangerous organization? an event like Queerfest? Uh, a piece of shit is not dangerous, but it's quite unpleasant to see on the street. Homosexuality is disgusting. Uh, homophobia is beautiful and natural. Homophobia is a natural side of people's life. No. I grew up in a country where it's against the law to discriminate against minorities. I'm struggling a bit here. I'm really surprised that uh, a politician and member of the current ruling party can publicly speak in that manner, and it's okay. He picked a young girl and referred to her as a faggot to her face. Even I feel funny saying that word <laughs> out loud because it's just so offensive. While we've been talking, the organizers have packed up the entire exhibition and moved it to their backup venue 10 minutes down the road. I'm not too sure of the address, but the police seem to know where it is. Go, 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 go. And so do the homophobes. And at the moment, the security that they've hired in are doing their job, but things look like they're about to take a bit of a nasty turn. The good news is that the security managed to shut the door. The bad news. I'm stuck outside. But at least I get the chance to speak to one of the most vocal protesters. Can you translate some of these signs? So what do these signs mean? What does that say? Not queer fest, it is a fest of Sodom. Russia, it is orthodox Christian country and it is not acceptable for us. Yeah. But the homophobes aren't giving up. So what it is, apparently there's a... Um, another way in. By the time we get to the other entrance, the homophobes are squirting people who are trying to get in with green ink. Stop it! Stop it! Just as I try to get in, someone seems really eager to get out. There's like a really strong smell coming from this and um this girl's dropped him and um it's really bad to the point where i'm actually gagging now just getting a sl slight whiff of it she makes straight for the homophobic guy i met upstairs earlier <laughs> do you know this girl yep. sorry who's the, you you guys know each other what's is do you know this lady god's wheel is that the same so you're from the same organization ah okay Excuse me, before you go, listen, I, I would love to talk to you more and find out more about your beliefs and your organisation. Would you be willing to do that? Maybe yourself and your girlfriend? When? As soon as possible. You can take the telephone number. Yeah? Perfect. Then? OK. Back inside, some of the anti-gay protesters are still here. And they're on a mission. Excuse me. Hi, are you, are you happy to talk? Are you happy yeah, to talk Mikhail to Cameron? Hello, nice to meet you. So, what is it that you, yeah, just... you guys are doing here today? And if there are children in there, what would you do? Eventually, I make it into Queerfest, and the smell of the stink bomb is unbearable. It's foul here, jeez. And I finally see what all the fuss is about. A room full of peaceful people looking at art 
and sipping soft drinks. It doesn't get more timid than a girl selling some vintage dresses and some free cookies. They're not even serving alcohol. No one looks underage, and the organizers are defiant. <laughs> Homosexuality itself is not illegal in Russia, as long as you're over 16. Presumably there are the same amount of gay people here as anywhere else, but they seem to be keeping a low profile. На самом деле парки красивые в Петергофе, в Пушкине и в Павловске. Vanya and Nushrila, the couple I met outside Queerfest yesterday, have agreed to meet me at one of their favourite places. Now, I understand that this is um, a bit of a special park for you guys, isn't it? Yeah. Why is it so special? Here was our first met, when we first met here. So your first date? Yeah. First OK. Day. Did you know, like, yes, I really, I'm really attracted to this person, I really like this person? No, I was really liked. I first liked в интернете мы познакомились через интернет. The only way for many gay people to meet here is online, but it's fraught with danger. Откуда Ваня мог знать, что я ну не нападу на него, ну не подстава какая-нибудь, ну could have been a setup. А очень много в России как бы вот с помощью приложения Grinder в iPhone или там другого приложения преступники встречаются с геями, с молодыми. И группа из шести человек а, нападает на этого молодого человека и отбирает телефон, Грабят, деньги, грабят. У нас несколько было таких случаев с нашими знакомыми. Like a lot of gay people in Russia, Vanya and Nasrilla have to work out ways to hide their sexuality, even going as far as inventing a girlfriend. Um, are there pictures of the two of you together? Ну вот тут, но не очень симпатичные здесь. Сейчас подожди. А, где мы голые, точно. Сейчас я покажу, где мы голые. How does that feel for you, knowing that your partner <laughs> <It's> is? <funny. laughs> is it just is it is it more funny than anything else? Because it is a bit ridiculous. Let's be honest. Ah, uh, I never thought I'd see this serious. Wow. So the the girl in this um in this situation that's in the pictures, uh, what sort of relationship do you have with her now? Сейчас мы с ней перестали общаться только из-за того, что у нее появился парень, который гомофоб. Он даже не хочет здороваться с нами за руку. Да, он всегда это избегает, когда подходит к нам. Wow. So, is there not a worry then that he could potentially spread the word about the true nature of your relationship? Мы опасаемся более того, он прокурор. Работает в органах. Да, он работает в полиции, в общем-то. Wow. Okay, well, I really hope that nothing comes from this situation because it's, I imagine, quite scary. Все будет хорошо, я думаю. Главное, я буду с вами, и все. Главное, я его люблю. Если бы не было этого человека, на которого можно было бы опереться, то, в принципе, я уже давно бы сдался. As I leave, I can't help wondering who wouldn't wish them well. But I'm about to find out. Despite being banned in Soviet times, the Russian Orthodox Church has really bounced back. Three out of four Russians now claim to follow its teachings and their views on homosexuality are uncompromising. Dmitry, who I met last night, is the head of a pressure group called God's Will, and he's here with his friend Mila to meet me. Dmitry, hello again, how you doing? <laughs> Fine, thanks. We're talking about the propaganda of homosexuality, we're telling people why it's not possible to be accepting of this phenomenon. Now, I... Have uh, I have gay people in my family? I know a lot of gay people back in the UK. Do you think that they're doomed? Безусловно, эти люди они враги Бога. Когда кто-то говорит с гордостью, что он гомосексуалист, мерзость, это болевочина. See, okay. Um, now, one of the things that happened in there yesterday was that there was some sort of stink bomb, and uh, you dropped something that looked like the bomb itself. <laughs> Мы хотели показать всем, что этот, что этот грех смердит. It was horrible. Некоторые люди начали, начали тошнить, и они прям тошнили из окна. 
Suddenly, we're joined by a third member of God's Will, and Layla speaks fluent English. We were trying to oppose people who who, who does that homosexual propaganda, mm -hmm. and we did it in a non-violent, in the most non-violent of ways. Could you answer the question? We did not have Molotov cocktails in our hands. Would you? Would you have? Would you have thrown a Molotov cocktail? If the law would let me do that, I certainly would. It's the symbol of the stench of sodomy. He would have done it. I would what would he have done if you, if the law, if the law allowed if, it? Yeah, if the law allowed what it. What would he do? He would kill those people. In what fashion? How would he kill them? Как бы ты их убил? By stone, like a Bible. Okay. So if the law allowed it. You'd stone them. Yes, he, he actually, he actually agreed, yes. Do you agree? Would you do the same thing? Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah, so. You, you, you're strongly trying to stand for having someone, someone's penis in your anus, and that we see as, um, as a disgusting thing. Uh, I don't even know. It's the, I can't even <laughs> It's quite tough to uh, hear some of those views when, you know, they're talking quite directly about people that you know and love. And I've met a lot of people here who wouldn't hurt a fly, but there is a whole wave of people that want them jailed, killed, assaulted. I'm quickly starting to understand what the organisers of Queer Fest are up against. It's only day two, and I need to find out where they're meeting in case the location has changed again. Hello, Alfred. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Um, so what is the plan for tonight? Uh, are we still meeting up later? No, unfortunately, uh, we lost our rain for today because of, you know, that's cool thing on the boat. Oh, wow, OK. Yeah. Um, how, how are you feeling about that? I mean, obviously, yesterday was, um, well, was tough, you know, and now this. I don't know what to do. Standing up for gay rights is clearly an uphill struggle, but a handful of protesters refuse to be silenced. In 2013, gay activist Kirill Kalugin held up a rainbow flag promoting tolerance in central St. Petersburg. Protesting right in the middle of the Russian Airborne Forces' big military celebration. Footage of him being attacked by angry paratroopers then went viral across Russia and then the world. Hello, it's Reggie. I've tracked Kirill down, and a year later, he's living in a safe house. Um, green or um, Green's good. Green's good, thank you. With a new tattoo on his forehead, a symbol of creative destruction. How long have you been protesting? No, since the 11th of the year, when the discussion of the law was passed. This isn't exactly the easiest place in the world to be uh, a young gay man. How did your family react when you, um, when you did come out? So when did they realise that you were serious, that this was, this was who you were? When I saw the TV, they Kirill's been arrested because of his activism. And in Russia, there's now a law that says if you are arrested for protesting twice within six months, you can go to prison. Are you, are you scared of going to jail? Better to shoot than to go to jail or anything else. No, I don't want to go to jail. В основном проблема какая, что с таким человеком, как Кирилл, и, скорее всего, срок ты свой не отсидишь, тебя просто убьют. Can you imagine yourself staying here and spending the rest of your life in this country? Я думаю, любой радикальный активист наступит тот момент, когда ему придется выбирать: либо уехать из России, ну, либо сесть в тюрьму, либо быть убитым. 
Amnesty International claimed President Putin has introduced 30 new repressive laws to silence opposition, gay or otherwise, in just the last three years. One of them is called the Solo Protest Law. Kirill said he'd show me just how it works when you want to protest without official permission. But I'm not too sure why he's brought along a couple of blank placards. I want to see how people will react, how will the police react, what will I do for being on the street? OK. All right, so um, why haven't you got anyone with you? Why aren't you um, protesting with more people today? Because if you're next to me, on the distance of 50 meters, there will be someone with a placard or with lists, and they will be arrested. If I joined you, we could literally both be arrested. Is that what you said? Kirill seems to be attracting a lot of attention, most of it negative. They, they seem to be laughing at you. Why are they laughing? Why does he think it's okay to say that to you? That's, that's ridiculous. Не знаю, потому что у него, наверное, проблемы какие-то в голове. Do you know what? Why not? 50 meters. Do you mind if I join you? Я не против. Только надо как-то так разойтись, чтобы 50 метров. I'm gonna keep walking. You tell me when I'm 50 meters, yeah? А я не знаю, насколько. Я думаю. Да, это нормально, нормально. Think illegal? It's illegal protests. That's right, there's nothing on it. Not a word written on it. Completely legal. Whole 50 metres apart. If I look a little nervous... <laughs> because of, oh, crap, I can hear sirens. It's because I'm actually looking for police. Truth is, I guess, based on what Karel was saying, there's a chance that we both could get arrested right now. It's beginning to dawn on me what the law really means. I mean... With the amount of distance between myself and Kirill, we uh, people might not even see him and then see me. They might even not even realise that we're together. They might not even realise that we're both protesting. It's really weird. I'm I'm sort of in two minds as to whether I should put this down or or, um, or keep it up on my way over to Kirill because now technically I'm close enough to him for the both of us to be arrested because, well, we're breaking the law. Literally right up to me folding this away. When the Russian is like one. Are you scared? No. <laughs> well, I am. I'm putting this away. I ain't going to Russian jail. <laughs> Tell you that for nothing. OK, how cold are you? Hands. Are your hands? All right, look. I think you've done enough. You've done enough. Come on. <laughs> Come with me. Come. It's great to see someone fighting their corner, but Kirill seems so vulnerable and alone. And even Queerfest, with hundreds of supporters, is struggling with a system set against them. Hello, everyone. Hello, guys. How are you doing? You OK? Yeah, I'm good. You look really busy. I don't want to disturb you too much. How's everything? All the venues that we had, they cut the contracts with us, so... We are looking for a new venues for... Uh... They cut contract. Yeah, right. Well, that's twice in two yes, days. I mean, yes, it, it... for two days, we lost four venues. Somebody calls to the police and said that there is a bomb in, in this club where we had a concert. We didn't talk even with police, but did know about this event. We didn't know actually how did they know about it and in which time it will take place. But when we come there, they're standing there and waiting for us. How are they, how are they finding out? How I are they finding out about because what you're doing? Maybe they heard this office. Maybe they what, sorry? Maybe they have something, of, something like bugs or... This is Russia, so the talk of bugging isn't a total surprise, and nor is the fact that the police have made no arrests yet in connection with yesterday's homophobic attacks. Происходило хулиганство, да, вот такое вот нападение на людей у входа. Полиция была все это время у входа, но ничего не предпринимала. Заявления в полиции есть, и они должны их расследовать. И сегодня еще будут заявления в полицию тоже по открытию. So you're actually going to go to the police? Uh, today? Yes. Right. 
With tonight's event cancelled, everyone's heading down to the police station. What are you expecting the police to say? I'm sure that they won't be glad to see us. <laughs> <laughs> What's this that he has here in these um, plastic envelopes? What is that? Is that? It's a statement for uh, police. If you've got that many accounts, there must be a reaction, surely. Yeah, maybe on the United system? Kingdom, but <laughs> here we don't share in that. We ignored by court, we ignore it by police, we ignore it by government. Is there really a point to keep coming back? Yes, because it's, uh, it's important for us. We make LGBT society visual, and now everybody knows that LGBT societies exist in Russia, because before us, nobody talks about LGBT society. Now they know about us, now they're trying to fight with us. We exist, and that's good. But visibility can make you a target. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? A homophobic yeah, website posting the identities and addresses of young gay activists has led to horrific attacks. She looks really young. Daria was viciously attacked three years ago and then dropped out of activism for many months. She lives on the outskirts of St. Petersburg with her girlfriend, Ksenia, and her two dogs. I love the fact that even the pillows on your bed have dogs on them. <laughs> Daria has now built a stable and loving home, but things used to be very different. What exactly happened? Я помню, что их было восемь человек. Лица были скрыты масками, в руках были у кого-то ножи. Сначала они кричали, обзывали, ругали. После того, как я попыталась ответить словесно, меня уже мне всадили нож в живот. Я пробыла несколько дней в реанимации. На грани смерти. Wow, and, um, and what happened? Were they, were they caught? Полиция даже не стали рассматривать заявление uh, о нападении. Меня отослали со словами uh, "Лесботин не обслуживаем". So if you're not protected by the police, how, how are you able to, to stay safe? How are you able to stay feeling safe? Um, Мне было очень страшно выходить на улицу. Я молчала очень долго, пока я не решила, что я сильнее этих людей, я не дам им меня сломать. Я боюсь, что будет как в прошлый раз. Страшно за нее, именно за ее здоровье, за ее безопасность, за ее жизнь. Now Daria is in danger again with new online abuse. Just how serious have the most recent threats got? Просто из разряда мерзкие лесбиянки. Самое неприятное это гореть на костре, сжигать вас. Do you think there's more of a chance of what happened to you happening again? Да, конечно. И наши власти сейчас делают все для того, чтобы становилось еще хуже. What do you feel about the anti-propaganda law? This law only brought only one only only result, it was the burning of homophobia. Yes. They felt their unpunishment, absolutely. Daria was stabbed by homophobes, and they got away with it. And now maybe this new law is making the situation even worse if it's sending the signal that it's OK to hate gays. Some people are so scared of the gay and lesbian community, horrified by, disgusted by, whatever you want to call it, that they see physically attacking someone and leaving them for dead as acceptable. I've only been here a few days, but one thing's for sure, the police are everywhere. And it feels like voicing any kind of opposition could get you into trouble. 
But Kirill tells me about an illegal stop the war demo against the war in Ukraine. And despite the risks, young radicals like Kirill have turned out in force. But it's also attracted hardline right wingers and ultra nationalists. People definitely know your face. Don't you get worried that someone might attack you? As the peace walk gets going, I recognize a face from the Queer Fest opening night, and he wasn't inside enjoying the party. Everywhere that I've been, this, um, this guy in the blue outfit has been there, and uh, he's been taking photos and he's been watching, and I haven't really thought anything of it beyond the fact that he might be a little bit nuts, but I'm not at home. And this is a very, very different climate and a very different place. And um, things like that make me a little worried. No, but in the but this man, he is from Russia, but he stands. No, he is around him. All the time, there are our opponents. And United Russia is the name of the ruling political party. Excuse me. Excuse me, is that a picture of, of us? Oh, Have you got pictures of us? Right, okay. You've been taking pictures the whole time that um that I've been here. What's the what's the reason? When we get to the main rally, I can really see the effect of that one-person protest law Kirill told me about. I don't really feel like I'm in the middle of a, a demonstration or a protest because, I mean, everyone isn't wearing the same colour. Uh, there aren't any signs or placards, and it's just a really strange atmosphere. Then it becomes clear why the man in the blue tracksuit has been tracking us when he brings over the anti-gay propaganda politician, Milanov. I can see he, he, uh, it's Do your you know, friend. Have you met this man before? No, sure. He is a well-known crazy person from St. Petersburg, crazy homosexual. We don't have enough space in Russia for such for such uh, individuals. Just as Milanov leaves, another homophobe quickly replaces him. It's Mikhail Kuzmin, who I briefly met at Queerfest. What do you, what do you think of uh, activists like Kirill and his friends? This is supposed to be a peace march, but people like Kirill are getting abused. With the police threatening us, it's time to go, but not before I get Mikhail to agree to meet me the next day. He looks exactly how I feel. <laughs> it's just so hard to understand the way that people think. I can't, I can't get my head around it. It's just, um, just really draining trying to um, understand the motivation as to why people are so full of hate, so unwilling to understand. It's just really bloody sad. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 91, gay life in cities like St. Petersburg suddenly became visible and decriminalized. But now, just 23 years later, that all seems to have gone. This is a country where 72% of those recently polled said being gay is unacceptable. 
I still can't understand what makes the average Russian so homophobic. Maybe a bit more time spent with Mikhail will help. Mikhail, good to see you again. How are you? You okay? Perhaps Mikhail can show me what real men in Russia get up to on the weekend. Я бы взял референдум по гандлу сексуализма. Ведь если они решат, что сжигать, вешать или еще каким-то образом их казнить, значит казнить. Apart from just slagging off gay people, that is. So where exactly are we uh, are we headed to now? Там будет проходить ну тренировка, то есть ну бокс и так далее. Алло, мы уже подъезжаем там. First, we're meeting up with Mikhail's opponent. How you doing? What's your name? Victor. Victor, nice to meet you. Then it's down to the beach. Are well, you about to start training? Is that the plan? Ah. На Руси мы, можно сказать, продолжаем русские традиции, потому что на Руси кулачные бои приветствовались. What's with the knife? Jesus, where did that come from? То есть это все в самообороне, никаких нападений. Делают замечания. То есть нож был у каждого русского человека. Can I see you know? Huh? And do you do you carry that normally, or you have that on you all the time? Yes. При прежде всего мужчина в русской традиции это воин. Это основа менталитета русского парня, русского мужика. If there's any doubt whether Victor shares Mikhail's opinion, it doesn't last long. Я лютый гомофоб, то есть, как большинство здравомыслящего населения России, русских. And if, uh, if you had a homosexual approach you, would you, would you use your knife? Нет, я бы просто хорошенько набил ему морду. The more I chat to these guys, the more I'm starting to think that they're scared of something bigger than homosexuality. The thing that's coming through now in a way that I don't think has really come through before is, um, is a level of fear. And I think the fear is that what is traditional and what is sacred about Russia could be lost. Mikhail, you okay? You sure? <laughs> Caught a couple to the face there. <laughs> oh, hang on a second. The police are here. Why, why are the police turned up? What's he saying? No one was quite sure why we had to stop filming, but guess who's with them? The man in the blue tracksuit. I think we might be being moved on. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe they heard that we're going to um, put the gloves on me. Didn't want shit to get real. <laughs> if I'm going to find out where Victor's extreme views come from, I need to spend more time with him. Luckily, he's invited me to join him for some manly Russian fun. <laughs> What's that? It's a pressed vein. Его надо размочить горячей водой, чтобы попариться. Сначала вокруг тела веником навить. So you're gonna hit me? Yes, it is. In the UK, whipping a naked man in a sauna could send the kind of message Victor might regret. But Britain suddenly feels very far away. If I faint, don't judge me. <laughs> Ладно, но как, как бы это шуточная температура для русских парней мужиков. Well, uh, <laughs> we can't go any hotter in here, because um, I'm not hanging in there. All right, Banya, what does this do? How does it work? And let's do it. I'm wearing shorts, buddy. <laughs> Начинаем вот таким образом пропаривать ноги. Send you. Сейчас смотрит обратно себя. Не может убивать себе душу. Ну, ты же из жарких стран должен это как бы. Funny guy. There you go. Ложись. Face of down. What am I doing? Uh, is it blocked? Uh, fuck it, oh, oh. 
Now we've bonded, maybe Victor can help me understand his problem with gays. So what is it that upsets you about homosexuality so much? Is it the physicality of two men being together? Is it the idea of, of, of men sleeping with each other? What, what is it? Обычно гомосексуализм ведет, так сказать, в одной связке вместе с развратом. Тогда уже следующей ступенью мы получаем, что можно трахать абсолютно все, хоть пылесос, хоть какого-то соседа. Who, who's having sex with vacuum cleaners? I'm just very interested because I don't feel the same way as you. Um, I'm, I'm a straight man, but I don't have the same, the same beliefs. So I'm trying to understand why you feel the way that you do about homosexuals. Гомосексуализм никак не может приносить положительную положительный элемент в, в, в русскую культуру. But this is happening all over the world, and the world isn't necessarily falling apart because of the existence of homosexuals. Западная пропаганда является ключом развития гомосексуализма, потому что в Советском Союзе такого не было, и до Советского Союза такого тоже не было. So you think the gay men could essentially pull Russia apart? Do you think society is going to crumble because, because of gay men? They are one of the ones who control the basis of our national culture. I like Victor. After all, I don't let every bloke I meet thrash me with a bunch of hot twigs. So I'm really pleased he's invited me to go to a club. A traditional Russian folk club. Suddenly, he's not the only one dressed in traditional gear. Kadri! Victor tells me state-funded folk clubs like this are hugely popular in Russia. And they're not going to let me get away with sitting down. Oh, hello. Oh, mate. <laughs> so where does this fit into uh, into Russian culture then? Is this part of modern culture? Or is this just very very traditional? Этим танцем уже очень много веков, но сейчас молодежь собираясь вместе на гулянье пляшет эти танцы, танцует. How important is doing this for young people? No, I think that it's конечно очень важно, потому что это очень обогащает нас духовной. Вот я думаю, я когда вырасту, я своим детям тоже ну, перенесу им эти традиции. Maybe this is what Victor thinks he's protecting: the good old days. Thank you very much. Spasiwa, spasiwa, spasiwa. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, thank you for bringing me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Pleasure. That was pretty pretty special stuff actually. And um and that's the first time I feel like I've really had a, a, an opportunity to see uh, traditional Russian culture like, properly. And when you sort of take someone like Victor, who uh, <laughs> at some points during today has felt like quite a scary character. Uh, when you put him in this scenario, you can understand why he is so, he's so tied to tradition. And it's a tradition that has no room for gay rights. So where does that leave couples like Vanya and Nasrilla? 
unable to be themselves in public and living in fear of being outed or worse. It's my last day in St. Petersburg. They've invited me over for a goodbye dinner and they've got a surprise for me. Mom. This is my mom. Hey, how you doing? I'm Thank Reggie, you. I'm Reggie, nice to meet you. It's not unusual here to live with three generations, but not with your boyfriend as well. Of course. This is my grandmother. Oh, wow. Hello, how you doing? Grandmother, Reggie, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> when did you come out to your mom? When he was 16. 16, that's really yeah. young. It was, of course, a big shock for me, but I took him as he is, because he is my child, he is very good to me. You're really lucky to have a mother like that. That's uh, <laughs> an amazing, amazing thing to hear a mum say here. I mean, grandma grew up in a different and difficult time. How hard was it to, to have her understand your new life and, and your partner? В общем-то, она сразу всё поняла, приняла. Поэтому бабушка, да, она очень сильно любила. Как был ребёнок, так и есть наш ребёнок. So what does your mother think about the two of you living together? She prefer uh, do not talk about uh, my nature. Uh, like I'm not exist or something. <laughs> she think that we have no future. So actually we have some kind of plans to move in America, USA, and... New York. New York, yeah. <laughs> this is his dream. That's a big jump. I mean, it's a long way away. It's a completely different culture. Yeah. So we're ready. Vanya gives me a tour to show me what they're leaving behind. This is grandmother. And mother room. Hang on a second. So, mum and grandmother have rainbow pillows on their bed. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> are, you, are you finding it difficult knowing that you're going to leave all of this? You're planning to leave this city, you're planning to leave this sunset in this view? No, of course, every day is sad about this. I started thinking about it about three months ago. And do you want to get married as well? Yeah, of course. It's the first thing that we want to do. Let's get married. And kids? Yeah, of course. My dream is actually very simple. To have a big house, to have a dog, 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 to have a dog. That's the dog. Yeah, that's the dog. Bon <laughs> I started ages ago. <laughs> Just how much do you worry about your son when, when he, he leaves and how safe do you think that they are? Do you think there's any chance that your uh, your son and his partner could have the lives that they deserve here in Russia? Ну в России если врать, врать и прятаться. I wish I could persuade them that they don't need to leave. But from what I've seen this week, they don't have an alternative if they want to raise a family. It's the closing night of Queerfest, and they're taking no chances on the location being pulled at the last minute. The venue's a lesbian bar. But as I turn up, my heart sinks as I spot the man in blue, a sure sign the trouble isn't far away. Hello. Do you not think it's a bit juvenile, sort of hanging around outside a, uh, a venue, trying to intimidate people? Are you not a bit too old for that? I don't know. I always think that I'm in a free country. There are people in Russia who are still in the truth and are standing for marriage, for the family. I've had enough hate for one trip. Wrap up, wrap up warm. I want to join in the celebrations. Earlier in the week, I doubted tonight would even go ahead. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Inside, I'm amazed to see Daria and her girlfriend finally attending this year's Queer Fest. Uh, you seem in good spirits, then. Are you guys up for a good night tonight? Are you looking forward to the, uh, to the end of Queer Fest? Yeah, it's finally over, and, of course, well, it's incredibly brave of you to, uh, to even come to this event. So um, you deserve a good night. I hope you have one. 
несмотря на все, 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 что происходит. Отбились. И поздравляю всех с успешным проведением квартета. I can't leave without saying bye to Alfred. He made this happen because he refused to give in. Come in. I'm going to send a shout now. I'm leaving St. Petersburg with mixed feelings. Russia's going backwards, not forwards, when it comes to gay rights. But the one thing that um, I think I'm walking away with more than anything is that there is a gay community here that, regardless of what the homophobic groups believe or whatever the orthodox groups believe, they are going to continue to fight. Some people are leaving, but a lot of people are willing to stay here and fight regardless of the conditions or, more importantly, the laws.